my name is Heather Ann and this is my YouTube channel, Small Town Grub. Welcome. I was a private preschool teacher turned middle school public school teacher turned stay at home mom turned homeschool mom teacher. <laughs> um, we just wrapped up our preschool year and I really had a wonderful time homeschooling my four year old daughter. I also have an infant and uh, it's been quite a whirlwind of a year. I can't believe we finished our first homeschool preschool year. <laughs> um, but I really wanted to share with you everything we did because I think we found so many great resources. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so this year for our preschool year, my daughter did a part-time preschool learning program called Learn and Play at our local community center. It was a wonderful experience for her. We actually just had its teacher appreciation week. So we got a little gift for her teacher and she made a card and drew a picture and I kind of meandered and looked in the doorway as she gave her the present and it was really, really sweet and precious. Um, my older daughter has some struggles. She just finally got her ADHD diagnosis, which I believe she's had for a very long time, but it's been a very long, hard struggle to find someone who will work with a younger kid. Um, she's very brilliant. She's so smart. She's so good at so many things, but she really struggles with her emotions and her behavior and her teacher has worked with her so well this year and um, we've been trying to work with her at home and with a therapist as well so it's been a long journey but it was just really sweet to see her grow. Um, it was the perfect program for us. It was three days a week for two and a half hours in the morning um, and I think it was just enough for her to get out and be socialized but not too much for her to be overwhelmed or to um, be in a position where she's just not emotionally ready for that because emotionally is the one area that she does really struggle and she's come so far. I'm really proud of her. <laughs> um, so that being said, she did that three mornings a week and we did homeschool anywhere between two to five days a week depending on the week. Um, our core curriculum that we used this year was from the Good and the Beautiful. It was the preschool course and I absolutely loved it. She learned so much. She learned every single letter and their sound sh um, and also in our home. So I'll start by saying she did her learn and play program and at home we did uh, our morning meeting, which is what I called it, where we did some alphabet work and some stories and just other learning things. Um, we did our the good and the beautiful curriculum, which is more of a language arts, but it also has shapes, colors, um, and a little bit of number work in it as well. But it is at its core, a language arts course. We did a preschool math at home course and we did SEL and we did signing time. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, our, we used the Good and the Beautiful preschool course. I actually bought the digital download file where you can print it out. And while I had a good experience with it, um, what I would really suggest is that you just go ahead and pay for the book. By the time that I paid for the digital download, bought a new stack of paper, bought a new ream of ink, because it takes a lot of ink. There was over 200 pages of printing, and this is just one of the smaller, cur smallest curriculums that they offer. Um, and bought a binder to put it in. I spent way more than I would have if I just bought the book, and the stuff from the book and the folder activities are really just a better quality. So just buy the whole thing from the company. Um, so it comes with your initial book where it has all the lessons in it. Um, one thing that I will say that I did like that I printed out was since I had it in a binder, I could easily take the lessons out of a binder and I put them into a kind of like dry erase pocket folder type of thing. And we would either use manipulatives. My daughter loved working with these Dollar Tree gems this year and we would just either put the gems down on the worksheet or I would let her use a dry erase marker and that really saved a lot of the pages. So when my younger daughter is ready to do preschool, I can use almost every page that I printed out of this book over. There's just a couple that had cutting or for whatever reason we chose to write on that one that I'll have to reprint. But um, so that is one good thing that I could just, when I printed it, I can use it in here and I can reuse most of the pages. But um, once again, it's really inexpensive. Their company is wonderful from grades kindergarten and up. They offer it for free as a digital download. Um, I'm personally very anti screen time for younger kids, especially, but um, if you are willing to just let them use a Chromebook or a tablet to view the lesson on it, you could use a stylus um, and use an app called Kami is a great one so they can actually mark up on a PDF version of it. 
then um, you could really do their curriculum for free from kindergarten on up. Uh, you do have to pay for the PDF of the preschool. But once again, it was a wonderful curriculum. It came with the book itself with 90 lessons in it. And like I said, we just finished them on Friday. And I'm so proud of her. Um, it comes with a preschool sheets workbook. So it has all of the letter pages so you can see them and we did a letter craft every single week once again i put mine in my folder and i let her build the letters out of different manipulatives gems diamonds around halloween we used candy corn sometimes we used rocks or flowers or candy or just whatever she had floating around sometimes we did cereal and she really enjoyed that there's also practice workbook pages towards the back of the book which you can do they're extra you don't have to use them what I found is we did not need them so much at the first half of the curriculum, but the second half of the curriculum, I felt like it went a lot faster. There was a lot more she had to remember. Now, I don't know if it went faster or just I started to buckle down on our schedule because I wanted to get things done, but I felt like the first half was super gentle and we learned everything at a really slow pace and we were also taking our slow pace, figuring it out as we go and come, I want to say, right after winter break when we kind of regrouped. I was ready to start moving and everything just went at a faster pace but um i felt that the things that she was learning went at a faster pace as well um yeah but she learned all of her letters she knows all of her letter sounds and i'm really proud of her back for that if you buy the printed version you also get this uh envelope of folder activities which are just really cute wholesome games that reinforces and helps them learn um the first game was definitely our favorite uh, we liked a lot of them, but the first one is called Mouse House, and basically there's all these little there's all these little houses that are cut out, and you hide a little mouse behind it, and they have to pick up, point to the house, tell you the letter if it's uppercase or lowercase, and it's sound, and then they look under the house and see if they find the mouse. And it was really cute. My daughter loved it. We played it so many times. Um, but this folder right here is the number one reason why I suggest you get the printed one. I went through and did all this work and made all these manila folders and cut out half of them. And I was like, I'll get to the second half when I get to them. And then uh, someone locally said they were done with the preschool curriculum and posted this for free online. And I was like, ooh, me. And you can print your own. It is a lot more work. Um, and this just is so much nicer quality. And it's at the end of the day, it would have been cheaper for me to just buy the printed curriculum and it's a nicer quality. So I highly suggest you do that rant over. <laughs> um, so for math this year, we did use preschool math at home, which was recommended by many homeschool moms, both on YouTube and Facebook. I'm a member of a few uh, homeschool groups on Facebook. And this program was adorable. I will say that I think some of it was definitely a lower level than Gwen. She's really smart. The one thing she did struggle with, though, uh, is the part where she learns to read her numbers. So she can count all day, every day. The last section that we just finished was um, on like addition and subtraction stories. She can do that all day, every day, but reading the number itself and like seeing the number written as like a seven or an eight or a nine, she struggles with that. Um, she's got 10, she's got one through five, she's got zero, but seven, six, seven, eight, and nine, she still sometimes confuses. And that'll just come about with time. I'm not too worried about it because I know she's gonna keep getting it in the K prep and in kindergarten and she'll just get there eventually. Um, but this program was really sweet. It's all these wholesome little games that teach all these basic math skills um, in the sweetest ways. I think our favorite ones where there was one where she had to feed a stuffed animal uh, treats and we had to count the treats that we were giving the stuffed animal. Sometimes you get snacks. Sometimes there's games like playing go fish or playing war or um, other card games. And Lots of manipulatives, they're really quick and easy, and it just teaches the basic building blocks of math in such incremental, small, easy steps that it's really fun. Highly suggest it, it was very cheap, you can get it off of Amazon. So definitely go with this one. Um, next up, we did SEL, and this is a book that I got for free from our local library. I had to check it out again for this video, and we worked through it all year. It's called Safe and Caring Schools, Activities for Building Character and Social Emotional Learning Grades Pre-K through Kindergarten. Like I said, this is the area that my daughter struggles, so I really wanted to have something structure because that was something that I personally wasn't entirely prepared to teach her since she is neuro neurodivergent. Um, 
she's very impulsive, she really has large emotional swings, and she just doesn't pick up on, we'll say, the social graces as easily as a, another student would, where if I'm modeling kindness and showing her please and thank you a normal, I don't want to say normal, but uh, a traditionally intelligent child, I guess, would, um, would just see you modeling it and they would pick up on it and they would see that's the way of the world. Uh, Gwen doesn't do that. <laughs> she really needs it to be spelled out for her and um, she needs a lot of repetition. So this program did help. Um, I didn't love it. If I were to pay money, I would not buy it again. But since I got it for free, uh, it worked well for us. I really loved that it had lots of book lists. So every lesson had one or two books that it suggested and I was able to find most of them at my library um, or on YouTube. There were a couple I couldn't, there were a couple lessons I omitted. The other issue with this is that it is made for an actual school, like a preschool or kindergarten classroom with multiple children. Um, so there was, I found myself, I had to edit a lot of what it asked me to do or a lot of the scripted things that I needed to say. And by the end of the school year, I was really good about it. I didn't even have to think about it, but at the end of the year, it really threw me for a loop. It also has a CD in it that you could print out all the worksheets and posters that you needed. Um, Overall, I think it was a very nice curriculum. It would definitely be better suited for a classroom, but considering it was free and we really needed SEL, um, I think it was a good option for us and she completed the whole year and I'm also very proud of her for that. <laughs> um, and the other class that I would say I do was we really wanted to learn American Sign Language. So I found these DVDs at the library as well. Let me see if I can get them without a glare. So they're signing time DVDs. Um, we really liked them. They were cute. They were a great thing for me to throw on um, in the middle of the day when we both just wanted to take a break when we were tired from trying to sit at a table or trying to focus because once again we have ADHD. Both of us actually I have it too. So focusing is and sitting still and things like that are very hard for both of us. So this helped us to kind of relax and reset. Um, I have a new baby so anytime that the baby needed something it would be easy for me to just pop this on and run away because I do try to minimize screen time during the day because once the TV turns on, we have a very emotional response to turning it off, let's say. So I try not to turn it on, but she knew that she would get to watch this and then that would be it. Um, I personally prefer DVDs. I am deciding what to do for kindergarten. I do want to continue learning sign language, but I feel like I have a lot going on. So I'm not sure how I'm going to work it in. They do have an online program. I was looking at it where they have access to basically their entire catalog of all their sign language lessons and movies. And I think it's only about $10 a month. So I don't think I'm gonna get it for the whole year, but I'm considering how we're gonna work out unit studies. That'll be another video. I will make you a video of what we're doing for kindergarten. But um, I really love these, especially if you can get them free from your library. Um, they're just very sweet. Even baby Lily liked watching them. She would see that they would just put the little kids faces on and then it would show you the little kids doing the signs and she even would get engaged with it. So it was pretty cute. Um, and we learned a lot of sign language this way, just from free DVDs. Highly suggest it. I'd watch it like the same one, maybe three times a week. We'd usually do one per week, and then um, I'd switch it out the next week. I think there were 12 in the first season, and we did it throughout the whole entire year. So they were really cute. Um, last up is what I used for my morning time. So we called it morning meeting. And I did an assortment of alphabet work, singing songs, um, things like that. So here are a couple of my go-tos that we used throughout the year. So um, we got this copy, the Rhyme Bible. My girls were actually just christened this year when Gwen was four years old and Lily was obviously an infant. Uh, Gwen was born right before the pandemic and my family lived far away and we were waiting to get her christened until they could travel out and then the world shut down for three years. So it just never happened. Um, and it got to the point where I was like, I'm not waiting for my family any now, anymore now. I have a second baby. I have a four year old who hasn't done it. So we just went away and did it and anyone who could come came. Um, but this was the gift that I got for them for their christening. I got them the Rhyme Bible and it's a storybook Bible and it was so sweet. Um, it has precious pictures. Gwen's favorite was the story of Jonah and the whale. Um, and what I really liked it is that all the stories, they're just written in kind of a verse and kind of a rhyme. So it just rolls off the tongue. So for example, let's try. God told Noah, build a boat, make it strong so it will float. 
make it tall and make it wide and put a lot of rooms inside. So Noah's family built the boat. They made it strong so it would float. But all the people laughed and said, they are loony in the head. Where's the water? Where's the sea? They're as crazy as can be. Um, so you can see it's just really, it just sounds nice. It's easy to say. Um, and it was just really a sweet Bible story that I loved for our preschool year. Uh, I might We'll definitely refer to it again in the future. Um, but yeah, Gwen had some favorites. Her favorite was definitely the story of Jonah and the whale. She loves fish. <laughs> That's her big obsession for preschool. She loves fish. Even for her birthday last year, we got her fish traps. <laughs> um, so yeah, highly recommend that version of a storybook Bible if you're looking for one. Um, we also did alphabet work. And this is what I wanted to show you. So this is Big Thoughts for Little People. A lot of YouTubers have recommended it to it. And it's ABCs to help you grow. And we did one of these per week. We focused on one alphabet letter per week. It was so strange when we got to the end of the school year and we didn't have any more alphabet. Um, but also her preschool program that she was doing, they also did one letter for the week. So almost the entire year we were in sync and doing the same letter. So every uh, letter, for example, this one is F. F is for forgiving a boy, a girl or a boy who is naughty or careless and breaks your new toy. So there's a little rhyme, there's a sweet little lesson, there's a couple questions that they can ask, and then there's a Bible verse. And there's always a sweet picture to go along with it. You can trace the letter F with your finger, um, and you can look for the different information. They will ask you questions about the pictures that shows whatever kind of virtue they're trying to teach you that week. Um, and also there's a hidden little game in the book is every picture has ladybugs in it. So we would go every week and we would try to look for the ladybugs and count all the ones we could find. And Gwen really loved this. I really loved it. It was a very sweet way to kind of get some more emotional learning and social emotional learning, uh, a little bit of Bible study and um, some alphabet work. <laughs> um, along with that, I used these two kind of book programs from our library. Um, so these are the My Soundbox books. So every week I got one for whatever letter we're on. This one is the A sound. And it's very sweet little stories and it has the letters. It's My A Soundbox and it talks about the little A and all the things that he's getting for his soundbox and all the things he finds. So he found apples, apples, apples. Did he put the apples in his box? He did. Little A found an alligator. Did he put the alligator in his box? He did. Um, Gwen loved these. We'd read them probably twice a week. And uh, they were wonderful for teaching the letters. And once again, to reinforce the letters and the letter sounds, we used this program called The Reading House. Um, this is box set three. We only did box sets one and two this year because one and two are just introducing the letters and letter sounds. So there is one book for every single letter in the alphabet um, in that sets one and two and it would always be like hello my name is a and then there would be a picture of an uppercase a and you trace it with your finger and the next page would say me too and it was a lowercase a and you trace it with your finger and it would just have a cute little story um, and they had really sweet pictures so let me show you an example so this is an example of the pictures i really liked the art it was cartoony it was fun it was not overwhelming so once again, this is the this is the level three box, and it's teaching more about sounds. I think it's starting with the this one says introduction to short vowel sounds. But I really enjoyed the pictures. I know a really popular program for young readers and kids learning to read is Bob Books. Um, I was not interest, interested in them at all. I think the pictures are terrible. I'm sure they are a great learn to read resource but I just thought this one was a lot better. Um, I also got for a kindergarten year dash into learning, but we did not use those for preschool. I'm saving them for kindergarten. But um, as far as readers go, I really enjoyed the reading house um, and we enjoyed learning all our letter sounds through that every morning. And once again, we did these books about twice a week. Um, what else do I have? So about halfway through the year, I would say, after winter break, I found this book at our local library, and it's What Your Preschooler Needs to Know, and we really enjoy this. I also bought the kindergarten level book. Um, once again, this one's from the library. I got it for free, but I bought the kindergarten level book because I wanted to use it all year, and it's just like really sweet, basic things that you would teach a preschooler that you might not think of. So it's broken into a couple of sections. So first is poems, 
and you will just teach them some poems and I kind of did it every week so on Monday we would do poems and songs and then on Tuesday we would introduce the next section which is stories and we read a story and it's just like your classic tale so uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears uh, the gingerbread man, um, a couple of fables, there's the little red hen, there's the three little pigs, there's how turtles got their shells, they did a good job of including stories from different cultures, and it's just like light little fun learning for your preschooler. Um, there was also a section about history, and specifically American history. So we learned about the pilgrims that came to America. We learned about George Washington, Betsy Ross, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and that's some of the American history that we went over. And it was actually great because in the second half of the year, that's where Black History Month is, Martin Luther King Day, um, all these different things. So she kind of understood a little bit more for the first time about what this stuff was about. Um, there's also a section on science. Um, which she really enjoys science. She calls herself a science kid. So she did um, a section on animals, plants, human beings, different environments. She learned about the human body. Um, she learned about sunlight, air, water, um, and just all these cute little science topics. Sorry, the mailman's right out there. <laughs> um, and finally, there's a section on art. Where there's a section on art where we explored some different paintings and even a sculpture from different artists and it kind of gave you just talking points about them which is something that I never did as a little kid but I thought it was really cute I did not necessarily love all of the art per se in the book but we enjoyed looking at it and talking about them and uh, answering some of the questions that it brought up I think this one was my favorite the little dancer was a sculpture and it was really cute so we enjoy just kind of expanding our learning with that um, some other resources that I had um, that we used were some really sweet little workbooks from Dollar Tree um, this is the one we didn't really we tried to start this in the beginning and we only did two pages and then didn't come back to it until I want to say the last like month or two um, and we did this whole workbook in the last like month or two once I kind of ran out of other things to do once we finished our alphabet work and I was looking for something to fill our kind of morning meeting time um, this is Healthy Heroes. It's Paw Patrol. She really likes Paw Patrol. Um, and it just had like cute little programs. She learned about washing her hands, going to the dentist, brushing her teeth, um, being active. She learned about the different food groups. Um, and she learned about the importance of bedtime and sleep, which I really appreciate. <laughs> um, but yeah, she really enjoyed this. She just finished that workbook up. This is when we did every year. We just did one page a week because it followed along with our letters and alphabets. So I'm just gonna do a quick little flip through. And once again, these are from Dollar Tree. So they were $1.25. Um, yeah, so this one's just Morning Starters, an educational workbook for pre-K. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And they also have them for kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. I'm hoping they have them again this year. I might go looking for one. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, these are some that she did at the beginning of the year and finished up also in the past. We did a couple of these little workbooks when she was three because she really enjoyed them, but we did them not regularly. We didn't do a full home, blown homeschool program like we did this year. But um, these were really easy for her. So this one is colors and shapes. And she just liked doing them because they were super easy for her. She knew all her colors and shapes earlier this year, which is one thing that I kind of found funny because in the Good and the Beautiful preschool, there, that's the things that she says, she doesn't have to have these masters yet. She'll work on these in kindergarten. And these are the things she knew before we even started. They were really simple for her and she just really enjoyed them. Uh, they were a good pick me up. This one is also colored in sh colors and shapes, which she finished. And things like looking for patterns, coloring shapes, specific colors, finding shapes learning about the different colors. Um, and this one was same or different pre-K workbook. It's also Paw Patrol. And once again, it was looking for differences and the same. Um, and she had to identify different patterns and things like that too. And uh, she was really great at this one as well. She flew through it at the beginning of the year and really loved it. Um, I wanted to show you a couple, I already showed you my gems. These are our dot standard Dollar Tree gems. Some people put them in the bottom of their fish tank 
but we use them all year long. They're my go-to most used manipulative. So there you go. Dollar Tree, Dollar twenty-five, most used manipulative. She really enjoyed working with them. Um, I also had pom-poms and I also had the ones that are like the little plastic diamonds uh, that she really loved as well. I didn't get this till the second half of the year, but I really love it. And what it is, is it's just your standard egg timer. This one just happens to be really cute. I got it off of Amazon, but if you look at it, it is a rainbow in a cloud and it just counts down. Uh, I found that when we were being reluctant or when we had to get things done, she doesn't have a sense of time yet. <laughs> so things that should take only 10 minutes are the days when we're really struggling to focus. They can take three or four hours and it should take 10 minutes. And eventually I get really frustrated after a couple of hours. So having a timer, um, especially at bedtime has really helped us, but it was also very useful for our lessons when I was like, listen, we are struggling. You give me a good focus for five minutes and I show her on the timer how long five minutes is. I said, and at the end, if we're not done and you focus really well, we'll be done. And when she did focus really well, we would be done in that five minutes. Um, so it really, really helped. I highly suggest grabbing a timer if you also have a child who is younger and just needs needs a better sense of time because she can see how much time is left. Um, this is a program that we did with Lily actually this year. Um, Lily, my little infant, she's 10 months old now. And we did this with Wentu. She finished when she was two. So we did not do... Uh, the thousand books before kindergarten, but it is through our local library and it's really sweet and I just keep track of all the books that she's reading and when she reads her first hundred books she got a tote bag. Lily is currently up to 240 which sounds like a lot but uh, we've been doing it basically since like a month after she was born. Once I started taking her in public to the library we picked one up for her and honestly that's not a lot. <laughs> I, feel, I mean, I guess it's a lot, but considering how much I read to Gwen when she was a baby, it's not a lot. Gwen would get like five or six books a day, and I'm very intentional about this. So if I'm reading a book to Gwen and Lily's in the room, I will not write it down. I'm very intentional about this is time that I'm spending with Lily, that we are cuddling and I'm reading to her. Lily is squirmy. She doesn't have any interest in sitting and just like listening to my voice with the book. She wants to go do things. She wants to pull on the book. Um, Whereas Gwen would just happily sit in my lap as a baby and just like, even today, that's the one way that I can really calm her down is if we sit down and we read a book together, she can calm down and focus in. Um, and Lily's not that baby and I just don't have the same amount of time as I did when I had just one baby. So um, I try to be really intentional and only write down the books that I'm specifically sitting down with Lily to read to Lily. Um, and yeah, we're at 240 and at, when she finishes them all, she'll also get a cute little t-shirt. And it's a really sweet program. So I just want to say, even if you have a baby, go check out your local library because you should be reading to them and they might also have a wonderful program for you too. And then every hundred books, she gets a sticker and she's too little to appreciate it now. But by the time Gwen was like one and a half, she was so excited for her sticker. And we would do it, I would say probably once once a month, we would finish one of a hundred books with Gwen. And we got, went through it really quickly. So they're never too young to read to them. There's also the uh, Dolly Parton books that you should sign up for. They'll send a free book to your kids uh, once a month. I did sign up Lily this year. They just got it in our county area. They didn't used to have that program out here. Um, and I didn't bother to sign up Gwen because she's almost five anyway. And I was getting a book sent to my house for Lily anyway, so Gwen could also listen to it. Um, these are two things that I purchased but did not end up using. So number one, this one's highly recommended and it works for a lot of families. It's the Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. I initially bought it and I thought I was going to use it and I read through the instructions and um, I just decided it wasn't a good fit for our family. So um, you can see, this is an example of what the lessons look like. And you can see that there is words in red and words in black. So the words in black are what it tells you to do. So you have to like point to letter R and S and then you, the words in red are what you're going to say to the child. So it's very scripted and it's very easy to use. My problem is that the pages were just so busy. Um, they weren't attractive to me. And as a teacher who's worked with small kids, uh, I want them to see the page and be excited in the same way that I am. Um, obviously I went with the good and the beautiful, uh, because that program is designed to be beautiful. It's in the name, everyone knows it. Um, it was also very cost effective. This one was more cost effective. And for families who don't need the extra fluff and the extra like, 
cartwheels and rainbows and butterflies, then um, it's a great program and it will teach your children to read. One other thing that I didn't like about it was that they actually, in order to teach, uh, in reading the instructions, they tell you that there's 26 letters in the alphabet, but there's 44 different sounds, which we know because different letters make different sounds, like C can make cut or S. Um, however, so what they did to teach the kids the sound before they ever, they teach them the sound first before they ever teach them the letter name, is they kind of made their own language. So for example, here you can see there's a line over the E. Um, I know there's a spot where they're trying to teach a separate I sound and they have like a lowercase I inside the uppercase I. And so basically they made their own written language to teach the sounds and then they backtrack and they take away their own written language to be like, okay, now this is the letter and this letter makes both of these sounds. I know it works for a lot of people. I also know from my years of teaching experience that it is a whole lot harder to unlearn something than to learn something. And I did not like that they are teaching something the incorrect way and then going and backtracking. And I understand their methodology and I understand that it works for a lot of families, but it wasn't right for us. Because if I go and tell Gwen that lowercase e has an uppercase line on it, and then in six months I tell her, okay, never mind, it doesn't, she, she would just do it for the rest of her life. <laughs> um, she would really struggle. She would really emotionally struggle with that. Um, so it wasn't a good family fit for us. Um, I chose not to, I never even attempted to do it with her once I read, I read through the instructions and I read through them thoroughly and I decided just, just not for us. Um, I do have it for sale on my Facebook marketplace. If you think that sounds for, good for you, if you have a kid who has no frills, if you have a kid who has a different, I guess, uh, different attitude, I don't know what to say, um, it might be a great fit for you. I know it has worked for countless families. Um, this is another book that I picked up just second hand. At, um, at a consignment sale before I even knew I was gonna do like a homeschool preschool year. I just thought it would be cute to have on hand to do with Gwen. And it's called 123 Math. It's by a company called Top Line. And it's pre-math activities for working with young children. We did, I think, two or three activities out of it last year. And they were cute little activities. Um, the main reason that I didn't end up using it was that I just kind of picked one or two. I just wasn't really sure really the order. I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's a perfectly sweet curriculum. I just saw the preschool math at home program and I just decided I liked that better and wanted to try it. Um, it covers things like sorting, counting, matching, developing shape recognition, developing number recognition, understanding relationships, developing thinking skills, measuring, exploring other math areas, opportunities for learning math. And it's the same type of feel as preschool math at home. It just has a bunch of cute little games. Um, I just, it just wasn't, I wasn't excited about it. I initially bought it as a resource and I just really, I think I used it once and I never really used it again. So I think it would be a great resource for another family to use. Um, I just didn't end up using it, that's all. And I think that's it. I also have a Chromebook that I got halfway through the year, which I enjoyed using for the good and the beautiful because they do have a little app with cute little uh, wholesome songs. Let me see if I can kind of pull it up for you. And there has been some debates about the app. Sometimes it works a little bit wonky. Like for example, I know it's not designed for a Chromebook. It's designed for either a tablet or a cell phone screen. But um, I really haven't had problems with it. Every now and then I have to like really refresh it and close it out and start it again. So you go into the app, you press preschool. Um, there's different lessons. There's the alphabet song. There are the letter sounds and movement activities. There is a pencil grip video, which they start to teach the kids pencil grip in preschool, even though they're not teaching them to write. It's just tracing and basic. This is how you hold a pencil and just work. Every now and then you trace some lines to work on their uh, hand skills. They also work on cutting activities, which work which was really nice. Uh, I really enjoyed the letter sounds videos. So there's just different videos for all of the sounds. And let's do H. H is for Heather. This one's my favorite. Oh, I just closed it out. What did I do? Open back up. See, and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it does bug out a little bit, but then it just opens right back up with no problem. So here's a sample. I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but just so you can see how it works. Oh, it would probably help if I had the sound on. So yeah, 
there's just a sweet little video like that for each one of the letters and their uh, basic most used sound and I thought they were really sweet. It was just a little bit of screen time so she's excited but they're all very low stimulation. Um, they're pretty, they're quiet, they're not encouraging her to jump off the walls which she has needs no encouragement for. Um, so I thought that was really sweet and it's just a very little bit, you don't even use it every day of the program. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you definitely don't need to. You don't have to do it. You can just teach them sounds. But I just think it was a cute little addition. Um, and that's about as much screen time as I want in my kinder in my preschooler or kindergartner's program. As a technology education teacher, I'm actually very anti-screen time with kids. Uh, my public school experience has where kids were in a one-to-one -one environment has proven to me that they cannot handle it. It is negative for the development and I could want to rant about it forever. But especially with these young guys, I really want to minimize it. So out of our whole year, the only screen time things we did for school was signing time and those little tiny video clips uh, in our beautiful lesson. And we obviously still watch TV in our house, but my kid doesn't have a tablet, she doesn't have anything like that. Uh, we don't even buy electronic toys. I think we have one or two toys in our entire house that are electronic and we did not buy them. <laughs> but anyway, um, the one thing that I did end up investing in for myself this year was uh, this homeschool lesson planning notebook. It is a 12 month undated planner. It is from School Nest. I got it off of uh, Amazon and I saw a lot of homeschool moms on YouTube use it. Uh, I did like it. I'm going to use it. I only bought it in January, so I used it for the second half of the year, and I'm going to use it for the first half of next year. It has a whole bunch of really sweet pages. Um, I added in, so what I ended up doing is I had to take it to Staples, and I spliced the uh, binding off. It was a beautiful binding, but I just found I couldn't write on it. It's too thick, and it just wouldn't fold right. So I spliced it off, and I actually put it in my Happy Planner rings, and I had to hole punch all these pages, um, and I also laminated the front and back cover. Um, I added in these little sticker tabs for each month and I used some of my Happy Planner stickers in it and I really liked it a lot better that way. A um, couple issues that I had with it is that number one, there are so many pages I did not use half of them. <laughs> I really like the ones at the beginning where they have, um, that they really help you plan your year. So there's an index page which I did not use. <laughs> there is a year overview. Um, which I kind of filled in my calendars. One thing that really bugged me is that the calendars are not evenly spaced, so that really bothered my OCD. Um, but I appreciated the grid and the fact that they're there. Um, there is an attendance tractor, tractor, tracker, uh, which in my state, we do not need to track attendance. So I didn't need to, but it was nice for me to see because I, it's very important to me that I am just holding myself accountable uh, and making sure that my children will get a very well-rounded, thorough, rigorous education. Obviously not super rigorous in preschool, though I think compared to a lot of people, what we did this year would be considered more rigorous. But for us, Gwen's so smart, it really wasn't a problem, and these were just areas that she needed to work on. Um, there is a curriculum overview page, which I really appreciated, so I used one page for pre-K. And I kept track of like our assessments and how long things were taking and stuff like that. Um, do, 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 do. I had used two pages actually for pre-K. Oh, also sports. Uh, she did t-ball last spring. She's doing t-ball again starting this week. I'm actually coaching her team this year, so yay for that. <laughs> um, she also tried soccer over the summer. She was not such a fan of soccer. Um, and we did so many different things at our local Cecil County libraries. We're so lucky to have them uh, in our area. But yeah, here's a list of many of the different things that I did at morning meeting. Uh, we did weather and calendar almost every day. We did the letter of the weeks where we did the My Sound, House, My Sound Box books, the Reading House books, and the Morning Starter pages, as well as the Big Thoughts for Little People. And I just spread them throughout the week. Um, and then for additional enrichment, we did the Rhyming Bible, um, we read over Aesop's Fables, we did E is for Ethics. Oh, I completely forgot about this. Um, Gwen picked up a Shakespeare book, and we read Shakespeare, and she loved it, and I don't know how much she understood of it, but we read it, and she said how much she loved it, and she told me her favorite stories. Um, and we did the Dollar Tree workbooks that I showed you. Um, I also have Kate, a planning page for Kate Prep in here, which we have not done yet, and my planning for kindergarten. Um, there is a spot to write down field trips, which we did a variety of field trips throughout the year, um, many of which were free. 
um, field trips, special events, things like that. Uh, our first crazy homeschool field trip we just did was for the eclipse. We drove up to Syracuse and we had a wonderful time. We went to a zoo. Um, we watched the eclipse, which we were scared we were going to completely miss because the sky was so cloudy, but it was actually just cloudy enough that the clouds broke up just enough that we actually could see the eclipse, but you could not see that if you wore glasses. We literally had to watch it with our bare eyes and see it because there was clouds in front of it, but it shone just brightly enough behind the clouds. It was a really cool experience. Um, we went to a wonderful zoo up in Syracuse. We went to Hercules uh, Candy Company, which we love. My husband followed them on YouTube and we traveled through Syracuse on our way to another vacation every year. So we always stop and get some. So it was nice to get some good chocolate and caramel. <laughs> Um, and we also went to, I think it's called Copernic Observatory. We didn't actually go to the observatory itself, but they have a science themed playground, which was the perfect pit stop for a four year old <laughs> field trip. Um, and we learned about a bunch of different science things and she played the most wonderful. There was like one thing that played like a rocket ship and she pretended she was an astronaut and she just flew all over the galaxy. We spent the whole week learning beforehand learning a, about outer space and it was a wonderful experience. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for preschool. If you have questions about anything that you we did, if you want to see anything more thoroughly, um, or you just have any feedback or, feedback or ideas, if you tried it, one of these things and didn't like it, um, if you tried something and really liked it, just let me know down in the comments. Um, if you're new here, please like and subscribe. I haven't posted in a long time. I used to do some pin trading videos and some hauls. Uh, I think I'm going to be moving in a direction of talking more about my homeschool and possibly about my small business. Uh, but hang on.